Hey you guys, welcome back to Lisa and Company. Today we are making paint stick Christmas trees, about a gazillion of them actually. Let's get started. Today I'm gonna to be taking this box of Sherwin-Williams paint sticks I picked up on Facebook Marketplace. I'm gonna use my miter saw and a really good brand new knife from Dollar Tree and we're gonna make some Christmas trees. So this one is going to be a stacked Christmas tree. And by that, I mean, I'm gonna use a whole bunch of different pieces of this stick, cut down half an inch on each piece. So I'm starting with five inches, and then I'll go to four and a half, four, three and a half, you get the idea, until we're left with a one inch piece at the very top of the tree. And this is what I'm left with. Now I'm gonna take this beautiful black and white gingham napkin I got from Dollar Tree and using a Dollar Tree glue stick, I'm gonna glue these down and you guys, you know how fragile a napkin is with Mod Podge? This worked so well. Then using my Dollar Tree sanding block, I'm just gonna sand in a, a, wow, you guys. I'm gonna sand in a downwards motion and it gives you the most beautiful, clean edge. And then just to make this one a little bit more rustic, I'm gonna take off a little bit more of that napkin right on the surface. Now we're gonna attach those to our stem and we're just gonna do it one at a time. And these ones are not gonna have any gap. So I put the top one on and then as long as these are centered all the way down, it's gonna look really good when we're finished. So I decided for the base on this one to do like one of those old fashioned Christmas tree stands where they would use four pieces of wood. You know when you watch like a Christmas movie, the trees always come with that stand already attached to the bottom. And I figured because this was kind of a tall and skinny tree, this would be the perfect base to make it nice and sturdy. Using the exact same method, I'm gonna make a little sidekick for this black tree and I'm gonna paint these ones white. Now these ones I graduated by an inch, so they are five, four, three, two, one. We're gonna stack those all up together and this one's gonna look so cute alongside its big gingham buffalo check black and white Christmas tree buddy. Because I wanted to show you another way to do this one, I'm using one of the paint stir sticks to make a space in between each of those sticks. It's got a little bit more of a shiplap feel to this one and I had sanded down the white paint a little bit. So this one's got kind of a cool, we're gonna call it a fixer upper Christmas tree. This one got another little Jenga block base, a little bit different than the other one, and I absolutely am in love with these and can't wait to add them to my living room shelves for the holidays. This one is actually cut the same and painted as that little white one, but on this one, we're gonna use a red and white napkin and make a really Christmassy version of this. Now my friend Tash does red and white in her holiday decor and she has little kids. So I had wanted to make one of these, what I was calling a wonky Christmas tree for lack of a more technical term. So we're gonna go through exactly the same process as we did on the black and white one and on the white one except when we glue these down, we're gonna have a little fun. So starting at the top, put that first one down and I did paint, uh, do the napkin on both sides on this one, just in case it was seen from both sides, then have a good time. Look how cute this looks. I just kept going back and forth and putting these on at an angle. Just make sure you're still centering them up or your tree is not gonna stand up properly. And there you go. We're done another quick and easy Christmas DIY. And doesn't this look cute with the little fixer upper tree? Now this is one of those projects that I started out making one and had so much fun it ended up as three. 
bear with me friends. So what I'm gonna do is use one paint stir stick in its entirety and that's gonna run from the top to the bottom down the middle of the tree. The other ones I'm gonna make a little bit shorter and I'm gonna trim those off just using my blade and then they're gonna go on the right and the left of that one. It's a lot easier to see than explain but I have a feeling you're still with me at this point. Now that you have what essentially looks like a long, thin chopping board, we're gonna flip these over and attach them together. I decided to use some craft sticks and just hot glue them down in three different places. Nope, two different places along there. And that's because once we cut this, there won't be room for one at the top. So first I made a little mark in the center one and then using my ruler, I'm gonna make a line from the very top point all the way down to the lower corner and that's when we're going to cut our Christmas tree shape. Now using that ruler and holding it really steady, I like to do three light passes and I know that sounds crazy to cut through wood but as long as you've got a good blade on your box cutter you're gonna have no problem cutting through these I like to do three light passes and then you can literally feel it coming apart under the knife now check that out does that not scream another Christmas tree and you guys that is how this project turned into multiple Christmas trees I used one small piece of my popsicle stick vertically to hold this together and then using the same process just trimmed off the bottom right at those lower points. Now that I had three trees, I needed something to put them on. So I decided to use this little Dollar Tree tray and now I'm going to take my three trees and put them on. And you're probably going, how did you end up with three? Well, design always works best in uneven numbers. So I did make one more kind of medium sized tree. Now I'm putting the Jenga blocks down right onto the bottom of the tray and then I'm just gonna add these one at a time. And yes, I am leaving this completely natural. A little bit different for me, but I'm feeling that kind of Scandi vibe that I'm seeing a lot out there this year. And I wanted to incorporate that into some of these Christmas trees. Because I was leaving these totally natural, I wanted to put a little something on them and I found these three gold Dollar Tree stars and I thought they'd look really pretty on top. Then I had a whole bunch of different small snowflakes and I just scattered those across. I mean, I futzed around with them for a little bit before I decided to just put one in the center of each of the Christmas trees. Now you guys are gonna find by the time we get to the end of this video, I have a lot of favorites, but oh my goodness, I love this one. Now because you can only watch me stick paint sticks together so many times, I went ahead and created this one. It's six full-size paint sticks with popsicle sticks holding it together. Now, you may have been wondering what I was doing with all the ends that I've been cutting off. Well, I saved them. They're in that bowl right there. Now, I am going to take some thinned down white paint and just give this a nice whitewash all over that's for the back of the sign as well as i keep calling them like bottle tops they look like little tiny mason jars or something then i'm going to take some of my antique wax just on a uh, baby wipe like i always do and just highlight the edges and then the lines between the sticks so they have a little bit more definition and the best part about using a diaper wipe well if you put a little bit too much on you can just take it back off the whole idea was that when i stack this up and create my tree with the white on white i really wanted it to still show up and give it a little bit of definition now you guys, I really thought this would be the easy part, but I found stacking it up to be kind of tricky. Now you can see that I was graduating it up and less one stick each time, but it was just getting really, really chunky. So I did it over and over again. I actually took a picture of it so I could try to put it back exactly the way I had done it. And I think I got it. I'm not gonna lie, I ended up using those banded shears and trimming some of the edges just to make sure they stacked up really well. 
Once that was done, I decided I wanted a little bit something and I have these great Scrabble tiles I got from Dollar Tree. Starting with the R in the middle, I just stacked from the middle out to make sure they were really well spaced and they didn't end up looking lopsided to the right or the left. Now, to finish off the top of the tree, I really wanted a star. So I added one of these little Dollar Tree blocks to lift up my star, and then I took one of those little laser cut stars and used that. This is where this project goes off the rails a little bit. I decided I wanted to have sort of a natural look to this one, and I didn't have any Spanish moss, so I went ahead and used the regular green moss from Dollar Tree and you guys can be completely honest. I'm on the fence on this one. Part of me feels like I wrecked it. It looks like a green halo to me. That is all I can see. Maybe I shouldn't have told you. Other than that, this was shaping up to be my favorite of all. Now tell me what you think with the star and the greenery. Yeah, head down to those comments, you guys. You know what I need you to do. So for these two trees, I'm creating what I'm calling chevron trees. Now to maximize my sticks and minimize my cuts, I went ahead and cut one and then marked it back and forth right on the stick so I could just go ahead and cut them with my miter box. And this made it so much faster. So for this tree, you can see that I have cut these so that I have um, a 45 degree on both sides this is so hard to explain now I'm just filling in the bottom so I'm just gonna measure and get the exact size I need to fill in the bottom like that now I have to put these together on a spine and I did it once I'm not gonna lie to you guys and then I had to take it all off because I went a little skewed to the left so what I ended up doing was drawing a line down the middle of my sign so sorry down the middle of the Christmas tree oh my goodness so that I could line these up and they would fit really well oh my goodness I hope that makes sense I used a couple of the Jenga blocks just to make a base for this, one on the front and one on the back. I'm using the antique wax and the baby wipe again just to stay these trees and I love it. I love using this because it dries so quickly you can just keep going with your projects. And I made sure to do front, back, made sure I got in all the edges and all the little cracks and crevices. I wanted these to have a really nice finished look and I do love the way they came out. The antique wax, just like stain, ha hangs on, sits on, <laughs> goes onto the wood just like stain and you get all those great different variations. I was having so much fun with these that I made a second larger tree, but if you take a look, you can see that the edges are a little bit different. Instead of cutting them on a 45 degree, I left those ones at 90. What do you think? Do you like one of them more than the other? Let me know down in the comments which one of these is your favorite. This one is so easy, don't blink because it's going to be finished before you know it. I took one paint stick and used it in its full size. Then I took three more and cut them the first one, just above those little dips that you have to make a handle. Then the next one was an inch shorter and the next one was an inch shorter than that. And I actually did that twice. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're going to put the longest ones on first, just with a little bit of hot glue right at the top. And you guys don't use too much because you don't wanna be trying to clean it all up afterwards. 
The second stick, you're gonna put a tiny bit of hot glue right on the tip and carefully slide it in. Now, if you look carefully, you'll see that I really made sure that those two matched and I'm doing the same with the third stick. I've sort of put them equidistant in there so they were nicely spaced and where the ends line up with the hot glue, I made sure everything lined up really well. Now, I took a couple of my offcuts and just put them on the back just for a little extra support there's not a lot of contact where these wood sticks meet up with each other so this just gave it a little bit more support now we're going to make a base for this one and i'm just going to kind of mess around with the jenga blocks until i get a base that i think looks right the scale was really important here because this is a really tall tree a really small base would have looked well just not enough so i had to make something a little bit more Here's my tip. If you want this painted, you're gonna have to do it before you put it together. I was happy to leave this one natural. I kind of ended up with a few different collections in these trees and they look really good all together. But let me tell you, not even spray paint would have got into some of those tiny little gaps. And I sure don't have the patience to work on that with like a teeny tiny little paintbrush. So if you want to paint it or you want to finish on it, just make sure you do it first. What do you think of this base, you guys? I was really pleased. I just kept stacking up the blocks and I thought it looked really cute. So one more in the all natural tree. I love the way my little OCD heart loves the way those little tops line up together. What do you guys think? Here's another really simple tree idea. So what I did was take two sticks and just stand them on their sides. And then I just lined up a third one across the bottom until I had a nice shape. No measurements happening here. I cut that paint stick down and now I'm gonna attach it together. So what I did was I left my triangular shape sitting there and put a tiny bit of hot glue on the end and I just held it till it's set up. Now I'm gonna do that on the other corner and then once that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and join the ones at the peak together. Now, you guys are gonna think I'm nuts, but this is essentially finished. I'm gonna paint it because I don't wanna be able to see all of the writing on the back of these paint sticks, and then wait till you see. It is super simple and super pretty. Yep, all I did was take a set of Dollar Tree lights and wrap it around and around on an angle, and then a tiny, tiny little dot of hot glue at the end to make it stay. Now my tip for this is every time I wrapped it around, I gave it a little pinch at the corner, partly so it made it nice and tight and it stayed where I needed it to stay, but also it looked sharper. It didn't just look like I'd wrapped something around. I also thought this one would have looked really pretty up on a candlestick. But wait, I made friends for this guy too. So I trimmed off the bottom of the paint sticks, just where that little handle is, and then I cut them from corner to corner, kind of like we did, oh, I don't know, a few projects back. And this gave me two exactly the same pieces. So using four paint sticks, I got eight pieces. And now we're just gonna assemble these and make a really pretty standing Christmas tree. To attach these together, what I did was take one of the Dollar Tree skewers and cut it to size and put it on the very first piece. What this did was allow me to have a piece that everything attached to. So rather than it looking like some pieces were longer than others, basically everything was gonna work together on this one. And all I did was keep adding the pieces one by one by one. And oh my goodness, super simple, super easy, really pretty. And I just loved it so much that yeah, I grabbed two more sticks, cut them in half, and I had eight pieces to make a really little one to go with it. Now, I was wanting these to match the one with the lights on it, so I went ahead and used my gray chalk paint on these ones as well. Mm -hmm. 
once these were all finished, I grabbed a couple of these little unfinished wood stars from Dollar Tree, stuck two together and put them on top. And I think these three look absolutely fabulous together. Uh, my mind is just going crazy with where I can put these in the house. All these different collections, all these different ones are going to look so good for the holidays. All right, video fail above. Somehow I lost all the footage of where I cut these pieces. So what you're seeing is where I start to put these together. So this particular one starts at five inches across the bottom and then it has 45 degree cuts on both sides and then it graduates. This one, the pieces are all the same size until you get to the very top piece and then I just cut a teeny tiny triangle to finish it off. These are gonna be able to, you'll be able to see a lot better in the after shots. But what I did was used another one of those Dollar Tree skewers all the way down the back and you'll see that I left it long and this is why. I'm going to use one of these little plaques from Dollar Tree. We're going to drill a couple of holes in it, and that's how we're going to make these trees stand up. I matched up my drill bit to the size of the skewer, and we're just going to make two small holes. I painted that little plaque up to match the trees and then using my side cutters, I trimmed off the skewers and I just placed those right in the holes. I didn't even add any glue. They were a really good fit. And I love the way this one came out. Now, so many different things you could do with this one. You could have used napkins or scrapbook paper on these. You could dry brush or distress. I almost added little tiny pearl beads that I had. I thought that would have looked really pretty, but I decided to keep these ones really simple just to kind of give you an idea and let your imagination go crazy. One more time, we're going to glue some paint sticks together and we're going to use one of those craft sticks on the back to do it. I left these paint sticks completely intact with no changes to them because for once I actually wanted those little divots, I wish I had a name for them, uh, to use as part of the design feature. So I've actually made three of these plaques and you're going to see what we do with them next. But before we can do that, I'm using my antique wax and staining the whole thing. So I left this one to the end because I was absolutely terrified to do it. I have a white Sharpie oil-based pen and I'm just gonna freehand three different Christmas trees on here. Extremely simple, extremely stylized. I actually wanted to do this project last Christmas, but I just, I was convinced I was gonna ruin it and I wouldn't be able to rescue it. And I just had neither the patience or the confidence to do it. So this year I was like, enough. I really, really wanna get this done. These Sharpie paint pens are absolutely wonderful. I picked this one up at Michael's, of course, with a coupon. And I did go over it a couple of times in some of these. Now, you guys, I know every single flaw on here. I know every single mistake I made. And I'm betting that you guys probably think they came out really, really good. So I've got to put that hat on and try to be a little less critical of myself. Now I picked up this super pretty twine at Michael's the other day and I'm just going to wind that around the bottom and tie them off. They had one that was white with a little bit of gold thread in it and you got to know I am kicking myself because I did not pick it up. I've said it before, we are our own worst critics. I absolutely adore the way these came out. I can't wait to use them. I may actually take these ones to work to decorate my office and well, what do you think, you guys? Would you try this? Do you like them? I hope so. You guys, I hope you enjoyed these 10 paint stick Christmas tree DIYs as much as I enjoyed making them. I am excited to spread these throughout my home as well as give a few away to friends and family. 
Hope Tasha really enjoys the red and white one and I have a whole bunch of red and white decor coming up just for her and her family. Of course, we always have so many more DIYs coming your way, you guys. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you know every time we upload a video. Make sure you ring that notification bell and don't forget to join us over on Instagram where even if you haven't received the notification, you'll know all about our crazy life and every time we upload a video. Thank you as always for stopping by Lisa and Company and we'll see you in the next video.